What's up everybody? Coming to you today from Craighead Forest Park in Jonesboro, Arkansas, my hometown. Uh, we're going to do another Mid-South Outdoor Life video. This one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to call this Introduction to Lucille 4. That's this boat right here. Uh, I've had a lot of requests over the last few months uh, to see a, a little bit more in-depth coverage of this boat. It seems like anytime I post a, a fishing picture, uh, whether it be on a Facebook group or one of the catfish forums or something, people always want to know more about this boat. And so we're going to try to cover some of it today so that other people, maybe if you're doing a, a custom con pontoon build or, or something to that effect, you can uh, maybe see some of our ideas and what has worked and what hasn't worked and, and kind of go from there. So a little bit of history on this build. Um, I found the, the starting point for this boat uh, on Craigslist. Uh, when I began my search, really the, the, the key thing I was looking for was pontoons that are in good condition, uh, you know, not dented up, obviously they didn't, uh, no damage, um, a good a good set of uh, beams that connect them was, was a key point, but that was really it. I really didn't care what was on top of the pontoon, I didn't care about the motor, I just wanted uh, good logs and uh, a good floor. Um, in this case I got lucky because this is one of the... Um, one of the first years that Tracker did an all aluminum tongue and groove floor, so I didn't have to rebuild that and it's, it's never gonna rot. And the pontoons were in great shape, very little cosmetic issues and, and no structural issues. Um, I started off, uh, I paid $3,000 for the package. Uh, that included this trailer. Uh, it had a motor in non-running condition. Uh, the furniture was junk, all the railings were good. Um, I was able to sell that motor for $900. I sold the frames for the furniture for $100. I've still got all the railings, uh, which I'll sell. Uh, but, you know, a little quick math on that. We're already down to $2,000 total investment for the starting point for this boat. And that includes a trailer. Uh, a double, uh, a, a trailer like this for a pontoon of this size is quite expensive. So it puts me at almost zero for the actual investment of the pontoon. So now that you know a little bit about how we got, got started and or where we started from, uh, one of my big concerns was the trailer. Uh, and that was a big big consideration when I decided to purchase this package. Uh, I live in the Mid-South, but I like to go all over the place to do my activities. I knew that I was going to use this for, for just recreational days, hanging out on the lake, grilling and pulling people on tubes. But primarily I was going to use it for, for fishing for, for big catfish and getting it bloody and muddy and taking it frog gigging and doing all sorts of things. And so I needed to be able to haul this thing all over the place. And so, all throughout the build, keeping this thing easily trailerable was, was a big thing, and, and having a good trailer to start with was a, was a good thing. Uh, these stairs right here, I, I wouldn't want to go without them. I'm on and off this thing all the time, uh, whether it be loading gear or cleaning it up from, a, from an adventure or whatever it is. And these stairs just make it so easy to get on and off this thing. If, if it was a trailer that didn't have that, I would be far less happy. Uh, I did have to build this bow stop, uh, pretty simple stuff, a little bit of angle iron and some blocks, but uh, that makes it a whole lot easier to, to get this thing in position and, and just tie it down nice and tight and know that it's, you know, no matter how many miles I haul it, uh, it it's going to stay where it needs to stay. By the way, in, in the few short months that we've had this thing going, we've hauled it a little over 9,000 miles uh, all over the Mid-South uh, without issue. One key point to hauling it this many miles was keeping it low to the ground. You drive around and you see a lot of pontoons uh, where the trailer design has the pontoon way up in the air. Sometimes the, the pontoons would be, may, maybe the bottom of the pontoon would be as high as the, the top of this one is here because it's sitting way up on top of the tire. Uh, this trailer was already designed to run the really small uh, trailer tires and designed to have the, the logs sitting down close to them versus jacked up in the air. That really helps with mileage. Uh, we can haul this thing around at about 13 miles to a gallon, uh, which is pretty decent. I mean, there's a lot of trucks that don't get that hauling nothing, so uh, that's not too bad, and that's even with having a roof on here. Uh, so I'm pretty pretty satisfied with that. Um, moving back a little bit further, underneath the pontoon, there is a place for a spare tire. Um, that's that's a key thing. You know, anytime you haul a trailer, you got a good chance you're going to have a flat. Uh, we've got four tires running and, and one is a spare, so we try to try to have that covered. I did have to add 
additional axle. Um, total investment to add the 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 secondary axle, uh, including the tires, I believe was uh, right at around three hundred dollars. But it makes a big difference in the way the whole package rides. Again, knowing that I was going to put a lot of road miles on this package, uh, keeping vibration down and and keeping the wear and tear on the actual structure was important. And I, I back here at the back of the trailer, uh, something I just I just kind of came up with on my own. I mean, I've never seen it anywhere else, uh, but but it's worked out really well. Is this this uh, this transom saver? Uh, it supports the the lower unit of the motor. We can when we drive in. When we drive in, the motor is jacked up, and it's not gonna. The prop's not gonna hit anything, and because of the way this trailer is designed, it, it catches the actual pontoons, and the and the boat comes in nice and straight, and so that always lines up in between those blocks. And then when I pull the boat out of the water, we just jack it down. By setting it on those blocks, a great deal of the weight of this heavy four-stroke motor is delivered directly to the trailer and not on the transom. Again, saving on wear and tear on the boat itself. Guys, we're just about ready to put this thing in the water and get on deck and show you the rest of the boat. Before we did that, I wanted to just kind of point out the fact that uh, some of what you see when we're out on the water uh, will be a little different than the boat is right now, and that's key to making this thing uh, trailerable. These tables, it's really easy to just turn those around so they're out over the water, which saves a lot of space when you're walking around the boat. But as you notice, you know, we're in road mode right now and they're not sticking out any farther than anything else on the boat. That keeps it within that eight foot, eight foot width. One other thing that I wanted to point out uh, that you won't be able to see when we're out there on the water is the way I did the storage under the deck up front. As you'll notice, there's a large aluminum pan, so to speak, under here, kind of shaped like the front of a John boat. Uh, getting this boat well balanced was a big key for me, something that was really important to me. And one way that I did that was by moving some weight forward. So in that pan, uh, I've got batteries, I've got my anchors, uh, some other various things that just need stored. They needed to go somewhere. I thought might as well put them up front. And so I designed that to, to act almost as a, a, a third pontoon. Uh, it, it does function well when you're out there on the Mississippi and there's big barge waves. Uh, and you're in a situation where normally you might slam the front end into a big swell and, and flood the deck. That thing makes a big difference in stopping the boat from submerging any deeper. And it's storage at the same time. So that's one of the key points that I'm pretty proud of and something I wanted to point out before we got on the water. That being said, let's get out there. As you can see guys, the uh, Minn Kota is handling the boat launch for us. It's a rip, Riptide Volterra. All right, without further ado, we'll just hop on this thing, get out in the water and uh, talk about things on deck all right guys so we made it to a nice uh little cove here with not so much wind so hopefully you can hear us okay um you saw the Minn Kota handling the unmanned launch that's not something we normally do we just thought it might be neat on the video but i did want to point out the trolling motor because i get a lot of questions uh whether it be online or if i'm just stopped at a gas station about what kind of trolling motor do you need for a pontoon of this size uh this is a, a 24 volt 80 pound thrust uh, trolling motor. It works great, uh, whether it be on a windy day or even out in the Mississippi w River when you have those real strong three and a half, four mile an hour currents. Uh, it gets the boat around just fine. 
uh, at 80 pounds. Uh, we're just going to kind of go front to back on this tour. You heard me mention earlier the under deck storage. Uh, this was one of the trickier parts of the build to get all this lined up the way I wanted it. But uh, as you can see, we got a, a box anchor here, a nice heavy anchor, a couple of batteries, uh, a couple hundred feet of rope, some uh, some stakes, uh, various things for securing the boat. Uh, getting this weight up front was, was pretty important to help the, the boat balance the way I wanted it to. You see a lot of pontoons run around uh, dragging the back end deep in the water, and I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to run as shallow as possible. Uh, and have the boat set as level as possible for various different things. Um, this boat, by the way, drafts less than two feet of water. Um, I can run, I can run in about 18 to 20 inches, uh, no trouble, uh, with the jack plate. So moving from the front uh, around to the to the right side of the wheelhouse, uh, these tables that we talked about earlier. Obviously, when we got to the ramp, we picked them up, we turned them around. They're now hanging over the water, um, which leaves this walkway nice and open. Uh, see we got the grill here we, we grill a lot out on the boat uh, we like to eat good when you're on the water uh, sometimes there'll be a tackle bag here or whatever you know maybe you're tying up a rig you can move the grill out of the way and use this table for that uh, there's seven feet of table here this one generally uh, you can see it's designed a little bit different there's no edge on this one so you can run your fillet knives down through here this table is generally covered in, in blood and guts from uh, cutting bait we keep a bait cooler right there uh, for our skipjack and our shad and uh, handle that business right here. We've got an onboard pump. Uh, it puts out the same pressure as your house uh, for cleaning the bait table, for cleaning fish, or for spraying Carson over there. Uh, whatever you might need uh, pressurized water for, we've got it. Uh, that does just pull from the body of water that you're in, so it's not drinkable water, but uh, it's great for washing uh, mud off the deck. Uh, you know, whatever you got going on that's messy on the boat that day, you can take care of it right there. Uh, moving on back. At the back of the wheelhouse, uh, this is where we carry our, all, all of the rods while we're on the highway or, or while we're running down the river. Uh, they just stand up through here. They come up through the roof. Uh, we, could carry, uh, we could carry eight there, and then we've got another uh, three rod holder on the front of the wheelhouse, which rarely gets used. Uh, but usually keep this pretty full. Uh, it does a good job for that. keeps them up off the floor. You can see we've in, on the subject of rod holders, I like monster rod holders. Steve L Douglas did a great job with this product. Uh, they're great, they're really secure, they're strong. I'd never worry about them bending or breaking. They do a great job. Uh, MonsterRodHolders.com is where you can check those out. He's got a number of different styles and colors and uh, different types of bases. And uh, it's a great product that I really like. Down here in the, uh, in the transom well, uh, this is something that we use a lot. Uh, I didn't really realize how good it was going to be while building the boat, but uh, it's, it's really useful. Uh, we put bait in here. Uh, you know, if we're running a cast net and getting some shad or, or, what, or, you know, some sunfish, whatever it is we're using for bait that day, throw it right here and it keeps it alive all day long because it's fresh water all day long. If we catch some fish that we don't want to clean right away, again, they go right down there and uh, it, it, it keeps, them, keeps them cool and keeps them alive for quite a while. One thing you may have noticed about this setup right now is that there's essentially no furniture whatsoever other than what's in the wheelhouse. Uh, that's on purpose. Uh, we do a lot of large species fishing and uh, it's an active type of fishing. Uh, we we kind of do some running and gunning. We don't spend a lot of time sitting around, but what we do spend time doing is putting fish on the deck. And so I didn't want a bunch of furniture clogging that up. Uh, we got a stool in there that we can move around and then we've got this modular seat which can go anywhere I want it, you know, if I want it in here, or if I want to keep it out here, out over the water, it's safe and solid, and it makes a good spot to watch the rods from. Uh, on days when we're not fishing, and we're just hanging out on a lake, uh, grilling, and, you know, floating around on tubes, we do have some, uh, some color matching uh, fold, fold out lawn chairs that we put out so people can be comfortable. All right, guys, so now we're in the wheelhouse, uh, the belly of the beast, I guess you could say. Uh, the controls, what it makes everything work. I uh, just call this the fuel cabinet. Uh, serves as a seat. Um, in here we have the fuel tank. Behind the tank, uh, there's the uh, the main battery. Uh, also the water pump, 
life jacket storage. We can really store quite a bit of stuff in here. Uh, there's some little organizers, uh, keep my snack cakes in there. Everybody else needs to stay out of there. Um, moving forward, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fuse panel up underneath the column there uh, that keeps everything protected. You know, you don't want to fire while you're out on, out on the water. Um, although I guess if you had one, you could just jump in. But uh, we have an onboard charger. When we get back home, we can just plug in one cord and keep everything charged up and ready to go. Basic stereo on board, uh, you know, not a thumper, just something to give us some tunes. Uh, real Honda controls. Uh, we've got um, a clutched steering system. It's really nice. Uh, this thing will hold exactly where you put it all day long, no matter what's going on, no matter what the currents are. If you point this thing in a specific direction and hammer down, it'll hold that heading for you. Uh, we do have quite a bit of lighting on board. Uh, can't show you that today because it's bright and sunny, but there's some nice blue lighting underneath the cabinets. Uh, we've got some, some lights up underneath the roof, uh, just enough so you can kind of tie knots and you can see all your rods from wherever you're setting. Uh, nothing too bright to scare the fish, but uh, enough to get the job done. And then we also have a, a 8,000 lumen LED light on the front of the roof so we can see where we're going at night. Uh, didn't have a budget for just, you know, the best uh sonar out there but we do have a helix 5 uh, it seems to do a pretty good job uh, we can tell what kind of fish are down there and and, and try to catch uh, exactly that so that's good enough for us well guys that's about it for the uh introduction to lucille 4 video we're going to be bringing you a lot of footage from this boat right here uh, we have a lot of good times on it and we're going to be sharing it with you guys uh, if you want to see more about the boat and more about what we do on it like the video, subscribe to our channel. We're going to be bringing you a lot of good stuff. Stay tuned.